Korea is the birthplace of Taekwondo. All right, uh, Kukiwan is the national headquarters of Taekwondo. It's in Seoul, Korea. You know, Master Lee was a pioneer. He taught uh, martial arts, Korean martial arts, to the Korean military. And uh, after that, you know, he ended up moving as a pioneer, one of the first ever uh, to introduce Taekwondo in the United States. And he ended up at the University of Georgia. After a short period there, something came up at Nichols uh, Athletic Department, all right? And he thought it would be better for him and his family and the opportunity to move to Thibodeau. And he moved to Thibodeau, and that's how we met Master Lee. Master Lee had a way of bringing out the best. He was inspiring. With Master Lee, it was um, like this, you, this black. And you'd come back and say, yes, sir, it's black, Master Lee. One class, they had a new student that, that attended, and he called me over, ah, dang, you come here. And I'm, uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. And he says, I need you to take this student on the side and work with him. And absolutely, yes, sir, you never told him no. So yes, sir, took the student to the side or to the back, and I really didn't know what to do. It was my first time ever working with somebody, other than me just working out. Um, so I did a few things, but not really knowing what he wanted me to do. Um, and I'll say, sort of like Dr. Bryan said, that um, when I think about that, I think that was maybe the first step that he took me to, uh, to start as a leadership role, in a leadership role, you know, and uh, I didn't know that at the time. And then that instructor, he stopped teaching, went before Master Lee, and he said, well, let me see what you know how to do. Shook his head no, <laughs> like this. And uh, he says, okay, we're gonna work with you. Yes, you come into class. One of the things that stood out to me the most in Mas with Master Lee is his consistency. You know, you always knew when you walked into a room, all right, what you were going to get. First encounter, I guess, interacting with him, I was testing and he looked at me. Boy, you need go teach class no problem, you need to go and teach the class. And that was my first experience of saying, yes, sir, I never did tell him anything, no, after. This is truly a master. There was a class, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, would go to Taekwondo in Homa with Master Lee. And uh, on Thanksgiving day, on Thursday evening, um, everybody stayed home because it was Thanksgiving, you know, American tradition. And uh, Master Lee went to class that night. So then that following Tuesday after Thanksgiving, he was very upset and, and pretty much chewed us all out. Why y'all wasn't here Thursday? And um, somebody spoke up and said, uh, Master Lee, it was Thanksgiving. And he says, this is no excuse. You can never miss class, even Thanksgiving or Christmas, you have to be here. So, you know, everybody just said, yes, sir, yes, sir. But eventually he eased up a little bit on that and gave us the holidays off. <laughs> His, his master instructors, his, his senior instructors, you know, he held us to a very, very high standard. And we knew, we knew that we just, when you got to that point, you didn't cross that line. Because it didn't matter who you were, what rank you were, everybody was held to that same standard. And you were prefaced before how to use respect, react toward Master Lee that way. You know, it, it was just his mannerisms, the way he looked at you. Master Lee, it, it, a lot of times it was just a look. Some people called it intimidating, okay? Uh, and, and folks, when they would approach Master Lee, would have that, you know, that hesitancy, okay, about how to approach. Master Lee always expected when you walked up to the table that your hands were down on your side, you bowed, you know, before you said anything, you bowed to him, and then you could shake hands and talk to him. He gave you that look. <laughs> when the bottom jaw came out, the jaw begins to protrude. <laughs> Oh, you boy. You always knew, again, when you walked up to the table and you bowed, you knew if something was wrong. You could tell right away, just by his look and just by the way he addressed you. You knew uh, he was upset with you if you were tardy. Uh, he really didn't talk to you. He just kind of gave you that look and you pretty much went to the back of the class to work out. And by next class, you know, he was okay with you. No excuse. Only one excuse to miss class. Funeral. 
No other excuse. He never wanted you to miss class at all. And it was about a nonviolent attitude. It was about a way of life, not just self-defense, not just dominance. It was about a way of life. It was a, a father figure. Just like you could be a friend with your father. If Master Lee were an animal, he would definitely be a tiger. I have to say tiger. Very strong, uh, focused, and uh, yep, a tiger. Tiger has those eyes, the strength about it. Master Lee had never played golf ever in his life. And then he decides one day that he's gonna take up golf. And I don't know of anybody that has done this before, but in one year, he went from picking up golf club for the first time to a scratch golfer. He traveled, he taught golf, he moved to Atlanta after he retired from Nichols, taught golf in Atlanta, he had all the equipment, he taught it at Nichols. I mean, you know, it's phenomenal what he was able to accomplish. He would take a golf ball and he would slice it into a pond. He would hook it into a pond. He would drive it straight into the pond at, you know, 180 yards. And I mean, it was just phenomenal what he could make a golf ball do. Trying, I hit the board, it just flies. It doesn't snap. He says, ah, oh, you boy, you come over here. Close your eye. Not expecting anything, I just close my eye. All of a sudden I hear, pow! And then he goes, board broken and he hands me the board. About 1980 is when Master Lee invited myself, Glenn, and a couple of other students to go train in Thibodeau occasionally, just to expand our experience with other people, which was phenomenal. And I believe we started Black Belt training with him in late 80, early 81, and then achieved our first degree Black Belt in 1982. And I fitted so much from my dealings with Master Lee believed that you had to be equal. You have to be patient. It'll come to you. He believed in commitment. He believed in dedication, being loyal. He was so strong on loyalty. Bring out leadership qualities. And uh, we'd go to the Mid-American Championship and everybody would pay respect. The successes that I have today, when I look back, all of them were either directly or indirectly related to him, his teachings, and what he expected of me as an individual. We spent time on sparring, don't get me wrong, but we spent a lot of time on life itself. When I look back at my life, you know, again, married for 41 years, you know, same lady, you know, two children, successful. Kids are, you know, again, went to high school, college, graduated, both fathers now. Again, never had trouble because of the way that I raised them on the, on the way that Master Lee taught me how to raise them. Over 5,000 route salesmen that, you know, reported directly or indirectly into me. And it was as a re result of, you know, you know, Master Lee's teaching. You know, a lot of folks would stress out about the job. And I knew, you know, I didn't have that stress on me because I went to work. I went to work early. I had the, the work ethic. I went. I had the dedication. I had the perseverance to work through the hard times. And again, while some folks struggled, and I was there as a little, you know, it was different, very different. And Master Lee always said this, you know, you stand up in front of a group with uh, your belt on, and you know, when you're standing up there, it's easy for somebody to walk in and say, this is the instructor, this is the leader, okay? But you take that same group, take all the belts off, whether you're in a classroom or in a boardroom or in a meeting room, you know, and everybody's dressed the same. Can they pick out the leader in that room? He was a father figure to me. Uh, I am forever indebted to my successes when I look back, never thought I could achieve the things I did, but that was from him pushing me at an early stage in life and not settling in on, well, that's all you can do. I mean, he always, always pushed you to the next level. Again, it was um, you know, a blessing that Master Lee ended up in Thibodeau and we got to be part of his you know, outer family and uh, for us to be involved and for us to experience all the teachings that he had uh, throughout that 40 year period. Mm -hmm.